really fun fall crafting, we're going to be doing uh, different types of tips and tricks for your pouring to kind of step up your pouring game. So if you are, um, if you know all about the pouring basics and you want to take it a step further, then make sure to stick around because this is definitely the class and demo for you. And I want to say too that Steven is in the studio with me today. So if you have any questions throughout our little demo today, then make sure to drop them in the comment section and Steven can relay those questions over to me. Yeah, guys, anything you want to know at all, any comments or questions, just let me know. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you want to do some of these tips and tricks at home, here's what I always like to have in my little pouring station whenever I pour at home. I like to have um, a non-stick baking sheet, so you can either have this um, metal one or you can have a disposable one like this one here. I like to have thumbtacks. This is a lifesaver and you guys will find out why in a little bit. Obviously, the surface that you're going to plan to pour on, in this case, it's pumpkins. So if you have been itching to know some different tips and tricks on how to pour more easily on a 3D object, then make sure to tune uh, to stick around because that is what we're going to be talking about today. And I have some really a really great tip for you guys. Next, I'm going to want some popsicle sticks or some wooden craft sticks. If you don't have those, some disposable utensils work great too, or coffee stirs, anything to stir up your paint and your pouring medium. Some cups. Now, we are going to be talking about all about um, Apple Barrel acrylic paint, and we have this really awesome set, and it is available on Amazon, and I'm pretty sure we're going to list that in the comment section below. So if you guys are inspired by today's class, or you love one of the colors I used, then you can go ahead and buy your very own kit that we're going to be showing today. And the great thing about this Apple Barrel kit in particular is it has the full spectrum of the rainbow. So you can definitely find any color you're looking for. Um, it's really easy to mix if you want a a really specific color and it's just a really really great crafting staple to just have around your house so that you are always ready to craft something okay so popsicle sticks cups I like to have some gloves you don't need this because apple barrel uh, paint is non-toxic but just if you want to keep your hands super duper uh, pristine then I just like to have gloves but sometimes I don't even need the gloves today I'm just gonna use them um, and then, yeah, you guys, I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. So we mentioned the Apple Barrel Kit that we're going to be using in today's demo. But we're also going to be using Apple Barrel Pouring Medium. This is one of my favorite pouring mediums. And what makes it so great is that you mix it with your paint before you do an acrylic pour. And it prevents the paint from blending together and muddying and looking brown. So it keeps all of your separate colors super neat, super vibrant, um, without muddying at all. And how are we over there, Steven? Are we good so far? Yeah, we're good. Everybody's watching along. All right, awesome. Okay, so like we said, I like to have this non-stick tray, and you might be wondering, hey, why do you want a non-stick one? Um, then stay tuned to find out, because we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our cups here. We are just going to be pouring two different colors for this round. So grab two different cups. You're going to want one cup for each separate color that you use. And from the kit, we're going to be using Apple Barrel Fuchsia. So go ahead and pour that into your cup. And we're going to be using Apple Barrel White. So normally when we do any pours here at Plaid, we usually say that a good a rule of thumb is to have a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to pouring medium. But when you want to pour on 3D objects, I always like to have a two-to-one ratio of paint to pouring medium. That really keeps, um, kind of holds the viscosity of my paint. It doesn't thin it down too much and um, it doesn't end up running off of my 3D object. So let's go ahead and add our pouring medium. And like we said, for this 3D object today, we are going for that two to one ratio. Whoop. 
And now what you want to do is you just want to stir it really well. Just you want to make sure that that paint and that pouring medium is really well combined. Just keep uh, stirring until you can't see that milky white color of the pouring medium. And I just want to address that too because sometimes that is a concern that the pouring medium is white. Is it going to lighten the color of your paint at all? Uh, it definitely will not. It will keep your paint color really vibrant. It just blends right into your paint color without lightening it at all. Okay, so since it is fall, we are going to pour on a cute little pumpkin. And so usually our common instinct is to, you know, set our 3D object right side up and then pour on top like this. But what I like to do is I like to lay it down so that whatever my eyes are going to be drawn to, and in this case it's the front of the pumpkin, I like to make sure that that side is facing up because that's where the majority of our paint and our pattern and our design are going to live. So in order to do that, that is where our thumbtacks come into play. So I'm going to flip it over to the back side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a thumbtack on all four corners of my pumpkin. And it's nothing special, but you do want to make sure that your pumpkin is going to lay uh, pretty level so that your paint doesn't want to run off. It wants to create that beautiful pattern and stay in place. And I love, um, if you're curious too, I'm using a cute little um, faux pumpkin. This is just um, made out of like a foam material so th uh, the thumbtacks push into there really, really easily. So let's test it, and that is perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. Actually, you know what? Let's move these a little bit closer in. And we're really, you know, not so worried about what the backside of our pumpkin looks like because um, it's the backside, and no one's going to see it. All right, so now, oh, and I almost forgot to mention too, another thing I like to do whenever I'm pouring on a 3D object is go ahead and base coat. Uh, whatever the object is, one of the colors that you're going to be pouring with. So that way if you have any empty space where the pouring paint doesn't get to, then it's not an eyesore and uh, it looks like it's kind of poured because, um, you know, it's, it's easier on the eyes and it looks like it, it's supposed to be like that. So we're just going to go right into it, you guys. And another tip, if you are new to pouring, I never like to give away all my paint at once that I just spent all that time mixing. I um, like to leave some behind so that if I want to add a little bit more of this color, a little bit more of that color, then I have more in my cup to work with. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more white. And we are just going to swirl. And wherever you see the movement of your paint, wherever it's really moving quickly, you want to let that area of your uh, paint be your guide to create your marbled pattern. So just keep moving around. Um, it's not done until you want it to be done. So. If you like more of a marbled look, then keep swirling. If you like more of a um, like kind of color blocked look, then you can stop earlier. It's totally up to you. And adding more paint to your surface kind of helps the flow of the paint a little bit too. And it looks like we are almost done here with this guy. I'm trying to get.
get this little spot that the paint doesn't want to go on to. But sometimes what I like to do, you see how that part doesn't want to get filled with paint? I like to just take my popsicle stick, dab a little bit of paint, and then you don't even notice it. So what we're going to do now that we have this beautiful marbled pattern, we're going to let it rest on our thumbtacks and the paint is kind of going to drip down a little bit. And then I'll show you guys what you end up with when it's filled out and dry. You end up with something like this. And you can see we um, painted this cute little black ghost on top. And like we said before, all of these colors of all of these projects that you see here today are in this kit that Steven went ahead and listed in the chat for you guys. So all of these colors are in that kit. So you just need to buy the kit and you can do any of these. And like we said, it is available on Amazon.com under the name Promo ABI. Okay, so let's set this aside and I will show you guys my next and final tip and trick. Oop, don't want it to fall. There we go. Move that out of the way. Boy. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I have this pretty big white pumpkin. And if you're curious how we got this really cute um, marble pattern in the shape of a circle, then I'm about to show you guys how. So if you were thinking when we poured that last pink pumpkin, what are you gonna do with all of the paint that drops onto your nonstick pan? And why do you need a nonstick pan? Um, this is where all that information comes in. So I like to use a nonstick pan because once your object that you've just poured on is dry and once the paint at the bottom of your pan is dry, then you end up with something like this. Ta-da! So as you can see, what we did to achieve this look right here is we poured a canvas or a pumpkin over this pan and then we let the paint collect at the bottom. We removed our surface from the pan and then we just swirled it just like you would with a canvas or an object that you want to pour on until you get this really pretty marbled pattern. And because we use a nonstick pan, I'll show you guys how easy it is to peel right off of your pan and cut into different fun shapes. So you see how easy that is? So you might get funny looks that you have a baking pan in your craft space, but um, it is totally worth it because you get to make super cute things like this. So with a little bit of TV magic, you guys, here I have um, this cute little jack-o'-lantern face that I cut out of another paint skin that I did earlier. And all you need to attach it to a pumpkin like you see we did here, is some Mod Podge. And then those black bats, once the paint skin and the Mod Podge is dry, you just go ahead and use your Promo ABI kit, paint those black bats on, and you get this adorable little pumpkin. So let me show you guys how easy it is to stick. So I'm gonna grab some Mod Podge. You can grab any Mod Podge that you like to work with. So matte, satin, gloss, it is completely up to you. And we got a fresh bottle, you guys. That's the best. And I'm going to grab my Mod Podge brush. And we're going to start by applying some of our Mod Podge straight onto our pumpkin. And you can apply your Mod Podge straight to the skin or straight to your pumpkin. It's really up to you, whatever you prefer. And then you just want to stick your paint skin down like that. Make sure it's nice and on there, perfect. Ta 
catch our second little jack-o'-lantern eye. And I like to be pretty generous with my application of the Mod Podge because obviously it dries nice and clear. And our paint skins, I mean, it is a layer of paint. So it is going to be a little bit thicker than, say, scrap of paper or fabric. So I just like to make sure that I apply a generous coat of Mod Podge without leaving too many brush strokes. So that's what I try to be mindful of whenever I do this. Now we're going to lay down. So cute, you guys. We're going to lay down our little jack-o'-lantern smile. Just make sure you kind of use your finger to really get it into all the different grooves of your pumpkin. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Really cute. And with that, you guys, I think we have finished up with today's uh, little craft demo here on YouTube. So if you liked this uh, little demo, then make sure to tune in next Thursday when we do another crafting demo, same place, same time. If you were inspired by any of this product that we use today, then make sure to go to Amazon.com to find our promo ABI kit, our Apple Barrel Pouring Medium, or get yourself a bottle of Mod Podge.